So I can see many new people coming in. So guys, just a quick reminder: our team, uh, team B nine members are roaming around inside uh, this room. So you can ask the questions to them; they will be noted, and we will get them answered by Tane after the event, after he like finishes talking. Okay. Now, uh, Tane, you can have the stage now. Thank you. Right. Okay, guys, can you hear me? Yes, you are. Yeah. Great. So hi everyone. Thanks a lot for having me here. Um, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, Tane, can you speak a bit louder? Is it fine? Okay, okay, right. Uh, just a second. Okay, is it better now? Is it better? Uh, yeah, it's better, it's better. Okay, cool. Nice. I uh, hope you can see my screen. So, hi everyone. Thanks a lot for inviting me. Uh, so let, let me like start with the slideshow. Can you guys see my screen and everything? Okay, hope you guys can see my screen. So hi everyone, I'm Tanay. Um, I'm a Kaggle Grandmaster in the notebooks category. I rank among the top 100 in the same category. I, I started Kaggle like all the way back in 2020 during the COVID lockdown and I've been on the platform ever since and it's been a really good wild ride on the platform. So other than that, I am a machine learning engineer at Meta Dialog UAE and I have previously interned at NVIDIA India as an applied research intern in the machine learning team. Also with that, I'm an open source contributor at DeepMind, Hugging Face, and uh, other other like smaller libraries like NVIDIA Rapids and so on. So so that's like enough about me. Let, let me like jump to the second topic. Okay. So right, so 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 let's start with this. So what exactly is Kaggle, right? And why should you care about it? And that's one of the reason. That's one of the main questions that I get a lot. Is that why should I choose this platform and not any other one, right? So, can we? Sorry. Yeah, it's fine. You can. Go. You can hear me, right? Uh, yeah, then you are audible. Cool, cool, cool. Great. So yeah. So why should you really care about Kaggle? And since most of you are BTEC students, you only have four years, just like I did. It's Tane, like, sorry to interrupt you. There seems to be an audio issue. It's very low. So let, just give us a minute. We'll figure that out. All right. Yeah. Is it better from my side? Uh, yeah, yeah, it works, works, works. I, are you guys able to hear it in the back? Huh? It's low. low. Can you guys, you can occupy the front bench as well. Please, come please come Right. You want to care, guys? So, Tane, if it's possible, can you use a, a microphone by any chance? Yeah, because I'm, I'm doing exactly that. Can you just give me a small screen? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Okay, is it better now? Can anyone tell me is it better? It's. Uh, can you amplify your voice a bit more? Like maybe talk a bit louder if that's possible. Okay, is it better? Yeah, definitely. That that's way way better. Cool, cool, cool. That's great. I just increase that. Yep. Okay. So yeah, let me uh, resume from where was I? Okay. So I was at what is Kaggle. I hope everyone is settled down so I can resume. Okay. So what is Kaggle and why should you care about it? So let me quickly go go over the watered down part and then I'll go to the more interesting part. So you really have four years in your BTEC studies, more or less, and you should really invest your time in something that's worth it. And this, I stumbled on Kaggle by sheer accident, as I would like to put it. So what exactly is Kaggle? 
So Kaggle is the world's largest data science and machine learning community. It has over 8 million registered users. I think it might be over 10 million by this point in 2022. This uh, the, the data is actually um, the data is actually pretty old. So um, just a second. Let me get the pointer. So so it has over 8 million registered users, maybe 10 now. And Kaggle is actually owned by Google. So a lot of uh, competitions or, or data science and machine learning competitions are hosted on Kaggle. It right now holds, if not the monopoly, then something closer to a monopoly in the world of competitive data science and machine learning. So there are a plethora of uh, competitions and everything that are like hosted on Kaggle in data science and machine learning. So many multinational firms that wants to solve a problem or wants to like take the use of the wide range of expert minds on the platform, host their competitions on the platform, and the top few performing competitions, uh, like few performing people who get good standing in the competition get medals. So they can either get a, a gold, a silver, or a bronze. And the top X solutions, like top three or top four solutions in most cases, get a uh, monetary compensation, like cash prices. So let me uh, quickly show what I mean by that. So if you go on a competition, this is the Kaggle competitions page. And let's say you go to this one. So hub map, hacking the human body. It's a pretty interesting competition. It's multi-organ fu uh, functional tissue unit analysis. And you go to leaderboard, you'll actually see these green marks. So these are the price contenders. So when this competition will eventually end in six days, uh, these or whoever is going to be in the top three places will actually get the prize money. And the pr total prize money is $60,000. So it will be distributed based on what the competition organizers have decided. And you can see these are the medal standings. So gold medal is provided to like until 12th place. And then after that, silver is uh, given to people with high standing and so on. So something like your competitive coding website, except you get medals for how, how good your standing is. Not everyone, of course, gets a medal. There are people down there who get none. So people under the bronze will get no medal. Anyways, so, um, so, so that's that. Let's jump to the next one. So who is Kaggle for? And let's just see if it's really right for you. And it, a lot of different people have joined Kaggle. Most of them don't even have a background in engineering or STEM and they're on the Kaggle. So it's for anyone who wants to, uh, who wants to be better in their data skills and who wants to do good in their uh, career in general, who wants to make a career in data science, machine learning or something like that. So as you can see in my second point, Kaggle community has Kagglers as young as high school students and as old as a retired professional. I personally have worked with a Kaggler in a Kaggle competition who is, I think, 16 years old or something. And yeah, there are retired professional students. It's just for anyone, right? And competing on Kaggle is actually pretty easy. So what you have to do is you have to just go to the website. You have to register. And after that, there are certain steps that you have to follow, like verifying your phone number and everything. Hey. Sorry to interrupt you. Can you talk a bit slower? I think our audience needs to process what you're talking. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So cool maybe right. if you can take a small pause wherever you're talking, it would be great. Right. So, uh, so you can go to this uh, like page Kaggle.com, and it's pretty self-explanatory. Like they show everything over here, and since it's like part of Google, you can just register and yeah, you can like scroll down and see everything by yourself. They they also have a pretty good YouTube channel. So it has a lot of, yeah, so they, they are now like 10.7 million. So it's more than 10 million as well. So yeah, this is the Kaggle's website. So in order to start Kaggling, you just go to the website, you register and like make a new account and then you verify your phone number and some other small things. And yeah, you are basically good to go. So it's just simple boilerplate thing. It's about registering. Okay, so why should I care about Kaggle? And that's one of the g bigger questions that I get asked most often. It's because Kaggle is actually one of the platforms that have one of the data science and machine learning platforms in, in this competitive domain that is actually recognized by industrial experts. So most of you are probably uh, familiar with, I don't know, lead code or, uh, ha or I don't know, code forces. And in some job postings, I'm not aware how much, like I'm not into much competitive coding, but as far as I know, in some postings, you have um, you have like certain criteria that people who are in top X percentage or something or any metric in this uh, co like competitive coding platform 
they they will get a preference or like yeah so in the job they will get a preference in the in the whole application process so same thing goes with kaggle although it's not as much as it's in terms of like lead code or something but it's growing certainly so there is a huge community on kaggle so that was just one part right uh, having help in your job so you can have kaggle as portfolio it's also that you learn a lot from kaggle you actually learn far more on kaggle than you will learn on docs and i can almost guarantee this so when i started i only knew tensorflow back in 2020 i didn't know about pytorch it wasn't really big then either so i only knew tensorflow and that i learned from google's courses on coursera and everything and i was really into ml so i knew i had to do ml only so i went to competitions after making an account and let me like show you so let's say you go to this one feedback feedback prize english language learning it's just an nlp competition you essentially have to predict seven labels so simple nlp competition like some something like sentiment analysis but for multiple labels right so you go to code section and these are like a lot of public notebooks so you can just go to the hotness bar over here and sort by most votes so these are the most voted notebooks and there are some really good notebooks so one of this notebook is optimization approach for transformers and it's i have read this personally and it's a really good notebook that shows that how you can optimize your transformer model training and make it better the other are baseline training and this notebooks so when i started kaggle i learned exclusively from these public notebooks and guides on kaggle in fact you can find almost anything on the kaggle code section so this is where all the notebooks are you can see the training notebooks and everything there is just a lot of knowledge so it's so in this case it's unlike uh, lead code or code forces that you can so once you see the solution you won't get the points for that uh, for that coding problem here you can actually see the solution and make your own different one and that's the really great part about kaggle because a lot of people share their learnings here kaggle also has uh, kaggle, like learn courses so you can see their courses it's by the kaggle team and the other people so they have written very in depth courses and they are very practical so less theory more practical stuff so let's say i go to a time series course and there is a whole um, timeline of what what things you should do like a whole path there's a tutorial and then there is an exercise that you can do and and yeah and it's by one of the kaggle team members um, who is the instructor of this course and it doesn't cost anything so yeah so and you also get a certificate at the end of it so so this is one of the things that you get from kaggle you learn a lot more than you learn from courses because there is actual practical uh, application so let me like also show you one of the one of the notebooks so um let me like open one of my notebooks that i made so this was one of the similar pytorch notebooks that i made about a year ago uh, it got 6500 plus views so this was about uh, this was basically a text regression problem where i find you in the transformer so i wrote some in depth uh, comments and like uh, guidance on how how you can do that so you can see the code part in kaggle the notebooks are simply your jupyter notebooks but the ui is just a bit different but cleaner in my opinion so i will like explain how you can make your own custom data sets what this function does what overloading this function does and then i've written the code and so let's say you wanted to try this so you can just go here after making your account and then you can so this part this one is this button is unavailable but once you make an account and verify it you can actually click on copy and edit and it will make like an entire copy of the the notebook with the data set and everything so all you have to do is just run each and every cell so yeah so and also of course kaggle has its own inbuilt editor i can't of course show it right now maybe i can if i go to kaggle.com i can show you a glimpse of the uh, the kaggle editor so i click on it and it will probably open editor yeah so this is the kaggle editor of course i haven't made an account so it's only for 15 minutes but it's a good glimpse of how you can run any code so i can run any code i want and it's going to start a session inside your browser and it's just like jupyter notebook it's like google collab if you have used it so let me just make sure this runs okay, this might take a little bit of time so in any case this these are the good things like why should you care about kaggle and of course kaggle rankings and the medals you get on your profile are a huge plus on your resume so yeah as you can see i 
executed this and without making an account just for 15 minutes you can like, do anything so uh, so if so if you let me give you an example of what um, medals are like so as you can see I have just a second. Okay, guys. Uh, really sorry for the inconvenience. Maybe my microphone is not in the correct condition. Can someone tell me if my voice is like on the right pace? Everyone is able to understand. Uh, yeah, Tane, your voice is good only. You can continue. Yeah, I can continue with this pace, right? Yep. Did did someone miss anything? Any questions? You can ask me like up until this point. Uh, Tane, uh, sorry to interrupt you, but can you speak a bit slowly because audience are not able to keep up with the pace. Okay, is is this space is this space good? Yeah, a bit fast. Yeah, sorry? yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's fine. You can go on with this. Okay. At any point, if my pace like starts getting fast, just tell me, guys, because I'm naturally a very fast speaker. So I I don't really understand when I like automatically switch to the fast pace. Anyways, really sorry for that. So I hope everyone can hear me now. Yeah. So as I was speaking, uh, if you like, for example, take a look at my Kaggle profile, it's kaggle.com slash hate and I have two Ys. Uh, you will see like different categories. So you'll see competitions, data sets, notebooks, and discussions. So we will get to that a bit later on what these mean. But for the time being, you can see there are three different types of medals. So there are there is a gold medal, bronze medal, and silver medal. So uh, let's let's talk about notebooks. So there is like certain criteria of what medal you get based on like your performance in that in that specific niche. For example, let's just say that you know what medal you get. So I got uh, a gold in this notebook, which has 150 vo votes, right? So you get a goal on 50 plus non-repetitive, non-novice votes. And that's like one of the technical internals of Kaggle. If you want to know more about it, you can just uh, go to kaggle.com slash progression, shows you how you can progress up the tier on Kaggle, right? So it, it's a very um, detailed guide on how you can progress. So yeah, so like competition medals, how you get medals in competitions. It's a very detailed guide. So as I as I said, you get five on five votes on your notebook. You get a bronze on twenty. You get a silver on fifty plus. You get a gold, right? So this was about why should you care about Kaggle, right? And I hope everyone got a point. So let me go ahead and put some weight on the second point that I made, or, or sorry, the first point that I made, which is that many companies actually, many data companies, machine learning, data science companies, uh, financial institutions that use uh, machine learning, mostly in time series, forecasting, and stock prediction, they actually care about Kaggle. So let me give you a real live example. So as you can see, this is one of the companies, if any of you wants to know which company this is, like message me personally, or maybe I'll send the link of the job posting. But this is one of one of a very good companies from Singapore. And as you can see in the last point, they expect that ideally you have a portfolio of Kaggle notebooks, discussions, and so on. 
so this is like, like an example of 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 one of the companies that you know uh, give a, give attention and weightage to your Kaggle profile and you will see this in many different places i can like show 100 examples right now based on like so many places that i have applied at and so on but yeah this is the general thing so this is why Kaggle is really important if you want to break into data science and machine learning and more specifically without doing an ms because uh, so i'm hello uh, Tanis, yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt you but there is a question from the audience uh, yeah go ahead yeah so tani can you suggest a beginners project on ml on kaggle like any suggestions you can just show the show the audience they want to know how things begin from here right a beginners project okay right uh, i'm really sorry i didn't cover this yet i was supposed to but so if you go into the competitions tab there are a few beginners ones so they say new to kaggle these competitions are perfect for newcomers so there are three competitions here and i think most of you have worked if you have done some ml you have you might have worked on the titanic data set or on the house price prediction so this this is also known as the boston house price data set and there is another pretty new one so let's say you want to make a beginner project and if you are just very new into ml like let's say you just completed andrew ang's course last week i would suggest you start with the titanic one right so you go to titanic and this is the what i'm talking about is mostly to hone your skills first of all okay getting into the competitive side of kaggle comes second first you have to understand how you work with kaggle and how you work with machine learning on kaggle in general so you go to the the titanic competition you read everything on this is actually a pretty good video on how to get started with this you should all give it a watch uh if you want to go to this web page it's kaggle.com/competition/titanic or you can go to competitions and click on it so after you made your account and everything join the competition same old deal you go to the data and you you look at the data carefully right there is train test and a sample submission file after that you can go to code and if you don't know where to start so i would first of all suggest that you make your own notebook first of all try to work through a solution and then you will get a submission file so you can read everything from this data tab how to do everything and then you go to the the code part and then you uh, like write your own code make your own uh, notebook and of course just so we are clear you can make a notebook either private or public so all these notebooks that you are seeing these are all made public by their uh, by their creators they they are not public by default they are made public so let's say uh, i do the same thing i go to hotness let's say i work with a solution but i'm not sure if i'm on the right track and i want to get some uh, i want to get some more experience into how you, you know you deal with competitive ml so this is a pretty good notebook it's an introduction in sampling and stacking so i open this i read through this then i try to incorporate some of these techniques like how to do sampling in my own notebook and i get another solution and then i submit it so this is your general um start of how you can you know start doing um ml on kaggle and once you are more experienced you are done with these toy competitions so you don't get medal for these three toy competitions these are just for your practice as you can see it shows knowledge here so you will not get anything neither uh, a prize or a medal and they they don't end so they are running for like at least they have been running for 5 or 6 years or maybe even more once you are done with them and you think you have a really good knowledge you can maybe start with some other competition so you can probably start with this one this is one of the one that i am personally working towards in my free time so this is cervical spine fracture detection competition it uses it's a huge data set yeah it's 343 gigabytes of data set and as i just told you you don't have to download this you can run everything on on like kaggle itself kaggle actually provides you tpus and gpus for compute as well just like google colab actually better than google colab these days so you get like 12 hours of gpu and 30 hours of gpu in total or something so you can do everything um you can do everything on on the cloud like on kaggle and yeah this is how you start you do better let's say you made a really good notebook by showing how you can use a certain specific practice then you can just make your notebook public that's how people will vote on your notebook like, like for example on this notebook there are like nine votes so it's bronze so so yeah that's like multiple ways you can make your notebook and submit the 
and use it for submission. And let's say your notebook is pretty good. You can use it, you can make it public and then people will benefit from it. So I hope it answers the question. So if I have to tell you about a toy project, I would say start with one of these three and then gradually move towards these bigger ones. Okay, great. Um, I hope that answered the question. Let me move on. If there's any other question, please just tell me, interrupt me in between. Okay, so now that you guys know what is Kaggle and why should you care about it, let's focus more on how you can climb the Kaggle ladder, how you can climb the progression on Kaggle. And this by no means is exhaustive. There are far more different things on Kaggle very intricate and it's a huge platform that you should totally invest your time in. But this is like a general, I don't know, rule of thumb, a formula sheet thing that you can maybe follow for the starters. So let's first talk about the tiers on Kaggle. So there are multiple tiers on Kaggle, how you start with it. As you can see, I'm on the final tier, the grandmaster tier. You, when you make an account, it's novice. And then you have to do some certain things that does not depend on the metal. Then you become a contributor. So your real journey starts when you're a contributor. So I would suggest you that if you make an account right now, you can become a contributor, like probably by tomorrow or in a week and you become a contributor. So I think there are a few things that you need to do to become a contributor. So you need to verify your phone number. You need to upvote some, you need to do one upvote. Um, maybe, yeah, you need to do one upvote one competition submission, one notebook run, and one comment. And this is so like indulge in the community. So take your time, become a contributor. And after that, you can gradually, you know, move up. So as I told you guys, you can go to kaggle.com slash progression, and you can actually see how you can progress. So now that you know how you can get a medal, it's pretty detailed on how you can you know progress through the uh, Kaggle tier. So let's say you made um, let's say you had five notebooks, okay, or 10 notebooks, and they were pretty good. So they were really received well by the community. Everyone liked the notebooks. In that case, you can, uh, in that case, let's say, so those five votes, and let's say all of five, all the five notebooks got like five votes plus. So you have five bronzes in the notebooks category, right? In that case, you will automatically become uh, an expert in the notebooks category. So as you can see, there are all these tiers, all these different tiers. So contributor, expert, master, grandmaster, novice, all these are applicable for all four different tiers. So if you take a look at my profile, I am grandmaster in only one of them and I'm expert in all three. So I'm a competitions expert. I'm a data sets expert. I'm a discussions expert, but I'm a notebooks grandmaster because I mostly focus on notebooks. And if you like, I personally thought that if I focus on four things at once, progress will be rather slow. So once you become, so here beside your profile, only your biggest, like only your largest tier will be shown. So let's say I was nothing in the notebooks and a data sets master. So then it would show a data sets master. I hope you get the point. It's nothing too important to, you know, think about. Anyways, so, so this is the thing uh, about the tiers. So everything has its own different way of leveling up. If you go to competitions, you, I think, need two bronze medals to become an expert. If you go to data sets, I'm not sure, but I think you need five bronze medals to become an expert and so on. So let me like quickly tell you what these mean. So in competitions, I think you know, you can do good in competitions, you get a medal. That's how you move up in competitions. Let's say you really love data scraping. And I know some people really, really enjoy scraping data. So you do legal data scraping and you make good data sets. So you can post it on Kaggle. Actually, this is a, one of the good practices because there are very less, uh, as you can see, there are only 69,000 uh, people in data sets or like 69,000 people in the ranking at least. So then you can you know, move up, post your data set. I, I did COVID India tweets data set like a few years ago. Uh, yeah, so it's COVID India tweets with sentiment. I scraped a data set, then I used transformer pipeline to, you know, add sentiments to the data set. And yeah, some people liked it. So this was the whole data set. So yeah, so this is the, uh, this is the data sets category. Then the notebooks category, as I told you, and finally the discussions. So let's say you have a lot of good resources. So, um, I think I posted, yeah. So I posted this really good discussion two years ago. 
about you know the top data sets other than titanic and i think beginners like you should really put a lot of attention to it let me just share it in the chat i hope someone can scoop it out of there so this is one of the good posts and i'll share it after the event as well on some top data sets you know that you can use to keep going after you have done the basics right so you can make a notebook on heart disease data set video game sales and so on and yeah that's it so these are the four tiers so i think now you have a basic idea on how you can climb tiers and what thing and i'm pretty sure some of you are already thinking they have like chosen a tier that they want to go in mentally but yeah so again more information on kaggle.com slash progression tane uh, just a second uh, <laughs> so guys uh, you have this cheat sheets in front of you okay so simultaneously with the event you can just go through it and if you have any questions get them noted down so the questions from the cheat sheets will also be entertained if our team members can answer it very good if not we'll ask them at once okay okay so let me get to um let me get to the final part so getting started with kaggle so now you know the platform now you know why you should care about the platform its benefits and everything and how the rankings and tiers in kaggle work uh let's just you know some of my tips so these are some of my tips on how to get started with kaggle so this this whole uh, slide deck like this whole uh, section 3 slide deck is broadly divided into two parts which is what to do on kaggle and what not to do on kaggle and of course this is like my basic thing it's not exhaustive it's certainly not in order it's more like a suggestion that yeah I'll become a contributor first after doing these these things and then you know start competing in whatever tier you want so once you become a contributor and this is all for becoming i covered it you know you can take your own pace maybe you find a good notebook you can do and upload and comment on it you can run a notebook or you can submit in a competition after making a solution okay so let me just quickly also tell you how you can submit so different competitions have different ways of submission let's go to titanic as we talked about let's say you ran a notebook and everything and if you have done some ml you will understand maybe you have participated on ml competitions on hacker earth or something so you will have an idea that you have to predict on test.csv and then you will get a submission.csv file right and it will essentially look like a passenger id and if they survived titanic or not so 0 and 1 right so you have to predict on test.csv so once you get that submission file you have to like submission data frame you convert that to csv or if you're using r you convert that to csv then you go to uh, the leaderboard and right now i of course have to join the competition because i'm not using my account right now but once you are inside your account and everything there's there will be a button called submit or submit your code or something you go on it then you upload your csv file and then you submit so then it will process take a few moments and then it will give you a ranking so it will see how good is your submission as you can see a lot of people have scored 1 100% in the competition but if you go further down below you can see some yeah so 80% or something whatever the metric is so that's how you submit in a competition so once you have done all of these basic things uh once you have become a contributor here are here like are a few tips on what to do on that so uh let's say you want to um yeah let's say you want to become you want to make helpful notebooks like i did because i can only comment on notebooks so in that case i can only of course tell you about notebooks right i can't tell you about competitions i'm just an expert i'm not really qualified for that so i'll tell you about what sort of notebooks are received well by the community so your first and most important aim should be to make useful and like good notebooks for the community don't make clickbait notebooks something like that that is you know deceiving to other people make genuinely helpful notebooks that helps others right that is when you are going to get the most uh, love and respect from the people of kaggle because there are very senior people on kaggle and you really have to be like you know performing like that consider it so make actually useful uh, training and inference so let's say um let's say you are in a competition so this is one of the things that i did whenever a new competition was launched i learned a lot about the competition i studied it deeply 
and then I made you know training and inference notebooks. How you can train the model and how you can do inference. So maybe one of the one of the recent notebooks that I made was um, let me show you my notebook. I hope I can find it. This is one of the recent notebooks I made 14 days ago. Uh, yeah, this is just a training and inference notebook. I just did everything, read, wrote some stuff on how to do it, and yeah. So make actually helpful uh, training in inference notebooks. Let's say you're not at the level of making a notebook in such a competition, then you make EDA notebooks, you know, exploratory data analysis, in-depth analysis on uh, different data sets and everything. So I have some really good, let me just quickly show you an EDA notebook. Um, yeah, so this is one of my most favorite notebooks that I made, it was two years ago, and I did a lot of detailed in-depth analysis on a data set. So yeah, you, you will get the links later. You can see it in detail on what sort of things I did. I ended up doing hypothesis testing and everything. So yeah, so that's the second point. And the third point is any contribution is equally important, not just in notebooks, but in any other thing. Any contribution is important as long as it's valuable and it's not you know wrong by the rules of Kaggle. Always, always, always obey the rules of Kaggle. It's very important. That's how you stay long in the community. That's how you get big from Kaggle. And the final thing is upvote on content you find useful. And many of the people actually don't do it. So let's say you found my notebook useful, you copy and edit it, but then you don't upvote it. And that is, I mean, it's not wrong by any rules of Kaggle, but I personally and a lot of good characters think that it's the wrong thing. If you liked our content, it of course took us time. So give us an upvote. And in general, anyone. So you like someone's work, you are you know, using it, you are taking excerpts out of it, you are taking code patches out of someone's work. The least you can do is upvote them and you know give them a credit. So upvote good notebooks, it will be reciprocated back to you. Same thing about karma, you know, it works. So that was what to do on Kaggle, and let's talk about what not to do on Kaggle. First of all, don't clickbait. You let's say you made an EDA notebook and you call it the best solution in this competition. That's wrong. Okay. Name your work as it is. If you do these sort of things, you will be caught sooner or later. Don't even think of making multiple accounts. See, you get like 30 or 40 hours per week for um, like 30 or 40 hours per week for GPU and some hours per week for TPU. So that's your quota on Kaggle, like on Google Colab or something. So don't make multiple accounts for more quota. This gets people banned very quickly. Don't make multiple accounts for multiple submissions. Use one account, play, play honorably, play well on the platform and like enjoy your time. Be nice in the community. I think this goes without saying. Don't uh, don't be rude or something in the community. It's really important. Be nice in the community. Actually collaborate, share ideas. And if someone is you know spamming or someone is playing with the progression system, let's say people are scamming their notebook links, that please afford this, please afford this. That's wrong. You should report them as soon as possible. So yeah, that's like third point. And most important of all is don't copy others' work. Let's say you went to this notebook of mine and you really liked how I plotted these two plots with colors side by side. It's okay if you want to use it somewhere, but and and even if you take this from my notebook, it will be personally okay to me as long as you attribute me in your notebook. So let's say you took this, you modified it a bit, uh, a little, and then in your notebook. So so you should like attribute to each and every person that you took inspiration from or you know uh, you took at, you used as source from always 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 uh, like attribute and give people credit where it's due okay so yeah these are what not to do on kaggle don't be scared about it just be a nice person act and play uh, properly that's more than enough so the kaggle part is pretty much over if you want to know more you can go to kaggle.com progression or you can go to the discussions part on kaggle there are really good discussions on how you can get started. Very nice people and sweet people over there. Uh, yeah, that's basically it. You can go to general. So let me quickly cover the fourth one, which is getting started with open source machine learning. So this is one of the things that I've received a lot and I've done this recently. So these are some of my tips. So let me just close these and open maybe a project. So how to get started with open source machine learning. So let's say you went, you found a repository. Let me like give you an example. Let's say you found Google Keras. I'm not sure if Google Keras is a thing. Yeah. 
we found Keras, right? Uh, let's say you found this repository, then you want to contribute to it. So one of the basic things or the first things that you can do is go to uh, good first, uh, how to access ED notebook, which you recently showed. Okay, so I think I included the ED notebook in one or in, in a document file that will be distributed to you guys uh, sooner or later. If not, I can send you the link afterwards. Maybe I can send you the link right now if you want. Let me send you the link. Be better. Where was it? Yep, this one. Let me send you the link. You guys can probably just. This was the notebook that I just showed. Anyways, so going back to uh, the the open source. So let's say you went to Keras. I think most of you have used Keras at some point, and you want to contribute to Keras, right? So you go to issues, and I'm talking about how to get a good contribution, like how to find a place to contribute. Other than that, you have to you know setting up your environment and everything. That will depend on the repository itself. So you go here, and then you can uh, do is good first or let me just show you an easy way so you go to labels here in the issues and in labels there is something called in most repositories there is something called good first issue so this is for first time contributors very easy if you know stuff about that so as you can see in keras there are no good first issues there were 26 closed so be on the lookout for any good first issue go to the issue and once you really you know understood it just go ahead and comment that you want to work on it so that's one of the first ways other than that, there are also need contributors. So some issues will have a tag called needs contributors, or something like that. That's a good way to, if someone else is working on it, you can ask you if you can volunteer. Okay. Always check contributing.md file. Most projects have a contributing.md file on, you know, basics of how you, what's the code style of the project and everything. So yeah, as you can see, Keras also has one contributing.md. So it's very detailed and it depends on different uh, different projects. So you can go here and they have very detailed instructions on setting up your environment and everything, right? Everything from opening an issue all the way to mer merging your pull request. So one of the very important things that I should tell you is don't try to read the whole code base at once. This is a very, very bad practice. If you, you will never understand the entire code base, it has probably 100,000 or million lines of code, okay? I don't really like saying this line, but it's from the Matrix movie, which says ignorance is bliss. And sometimes it's really good in some cases. So don't try to understand everything at once. It's not going to go well. I tried that for my first and second year. I couldn't do a single contribution. Okay. Keep your vision narrow. Keep your vision focused. Focus on what you want to fix or what you want to implement. That's it. And a bit left and right, but not like towards the entire thing. Don't try to understand the whole project and then fix something okay and if you want to implement something yourself so for new feature implementation proposals there is actually good instructions on keras you know you can open an issue and everything so open an issue and if let's say the no one you know sees your issue or something one of the things that i do and i don't really recommend it but if you really think it's going to be a good contribution to the project and it's very much needed then you can go to the contributors and see some of the core maintainers and maybe you can try messaging them. Don't spam them. Just message them very subtle, subtle in the subtle way that you want to do this. And 99% of the times, people are pretty nice. This has worked with me. But this should be your last resort. First of all, the first thing should be go ahead, open an issue, click on new issue, and yeah, open an issue. So yeah, that's basically some of my tips for contributing to open source ML. I hope I did not miss something. Um, if there is anything else. Maybe you guys can take the mic. Uh, yeah, then can you pause for a minute? Yeah, sure. That's it for the.
start the presentation. Presentation group is projected and projected. Okay. 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 Hello. <laughs> 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 can you hear us? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, all right. So, uh, hey, everyone. Uh, the presentation is over and we are now moving on to the phase of question answer. So, Tane is here to answer the questions. Meanwhile, I'll be assisting him and we, let's try to make it more of a discussion. And uh, let's not try to make it a monologue, right? So, first of all, uh, we gave you this page, right? Any of you have any idea what it is? Any of you have any idea what it is? You can take raise your hand. Guys, uh, just one minute I'll wait for you, then we'll move on. So it's a good opportunity for you to grab those objects. Thank you. So uh, here in the bottom, if you see, we have given you a QR code. It's a need for uh, need for more resources, right? So in this thing, we have uploaded various resources, right? It's a very long video. It's been presented on the screen, right? So uh, the, in the form, we asked you the, what the questions you have for us. And uh, data data science, maybe ML, maybe open source, right? So, like, huge chunk of them was about what the roadmap for ML, right? You guys just curious about it, right? So, the uh, roadmap has come up with this block, right? So, in this, we have put up a source for what Python is, what data science is, get this project with it, and uh, we have essential programming knowledge uh, that we use when we were, say, Kaggle uh, or maybe data science and everything. So, we'll just scroll the page. Uh, we'll yeah. So the first section, yeah, of course, data scientist. What is what is a data scientist? Do any of you have any idea? We'll give you a mic. So, we are in a technical college. Most of you will be from CSE and some are from uh, other branches, right? But um, look, we are running out of the key by software engineering. Now, okay, we need to do by data science. We have a lot of data. I want to become a data scientist. I want to become a data analyst, right? And no one knows that it's just high. My data scientist is not a good thing. It's not like that. It's just a simple job. Just like a software engineer, but you have a role different of that. Data scientist is what is it? Let's hear it from there. 
Hello, Tanay. Yep. Yep. So here's a quick FAQ for you. Uh, what is a data scientist and how does it, uh, his day look like and what tasks does he do? What kind of problems does he solve? Right. So, uh, okay. So first of all, let me answer what is a data scientist. Then I can maybe tell you a bit about how my day looks like as a machine learning engineer, which is something similar to a data scientist. So uh, a data scientist in a very general sense is someone who has to do everything with data. So not, not the getting the data part, but a data scientist is tasked broadly with, you know, getting the intelligence out of the data. Let's say you have data for insurance sales or something. Let's say you have data for admissions at your college. Okay. And you want to see how many students will end up, you know, not taking your college, going to some other college. And you have a lot of data from past years. You can probably do that prediction. And if you think about it, that's a very, very good skill because, uh, it's, it's essentially predicting future from past data, right? So that's that's what data scientists do in general. And there, it's, there is more detailed definition inside of it. Yeah. Now to the second question, which is how does a day of a data scientist looks like? So I think most of the time, if you are a data scientist, so the data scientists are in two sorts of different categories, at least how I see it. One is in a very research-based form, and one is in a very applied form. So in applied form, I have worked with a, in an applied form for a few months. So in that case, you have to, you know, you have data, you have to apply different techniques to get your stuff done and, you know, make sure things work. In a research-based form, which where I am currently, where uh, I have a lot to do with research, I read a lot of papers. So my morning starts with reading a few research papers, maybe two, sometimes or three. And then I go around, you know, playing with models, trying out different things. Sometimes cleaning the data is also part of my job. So yeah, that's essentially what a data scientist day looks like. There's a lot of trial and error. And yeah, it's like software engineering, but it has to do with data. So it's not very different. It just we use different tools and there are different ways. So maths is very much integrated in your daily schedule. All right, so he gave us some idea about how a day of data science look, data scientists look like. So to for a quick summary, so let's take an example of companies like Amazon, Google, right? So you guys are either software engineer or software engineer, but you know that job is JD, that's why you know JD is job description for a role of researcher or maybe data scientist in this company. MNCs like Google, Amazon, you see a BS, MS, PhD is required. So, it's not a Because the person needs to have a like, strong mathematical background, have strong statistical background in the you say, mathematical concepts, and he needs to be very sound in reading research paper and converting and implementing that as code. So, there may be multiple roles, a flight scientist, and maybe you can say on a development side or the other, like on the flight side. So, some of the data scientists work on the you say there's a goal by thing. Some of them will be working with data, collecting data, how to clean it, how to make it more usable, make it more clearable to the ML model. And uh, let's take the example of very classic house prediction. So in house prediction of problem, how many of you have like idea? So you know many ML model or Android engine apps are there. So first, first chapter is house prediction. This way, this is the idea that we have to know the city. Data, what is data telling you? So you cannot just take a data 
Now, house vibration and the speed of the model makes some tensor flow, CNM, etc., linear models, whatever it is. And we did get out. What will you get? You will get numbers. How will you interpret it? So, you need to have knowledge about inputs and outputs of that, right? So, that's where understanding the data is very important for us. He, like I mentioned earlier, I might be reading uh, myself here. He understand what features are important. So, when it comes to Kaggle, uh, right? Kaggle, how many of uh, you got a little bit idea of Kaggle? So, it's basically a uh, competition platform. That's what we have. Right? Kaggle has competitions, and many people have data set. It's not data set. It's not data set. It's not data set. It's not data set. So, Kaggle, how many of you know that uh, Kaggle is an initiative by Google? Nice. So, Kaggle uh, basically in 2010, uh, to, as Amazon was advancing, so if you search on Google Trends, uh, if you idea Google Trends, yeah, nice. so in that website you can, for example, a particular keyword, let's say the language Dua. So, if you search over there, so in the, uh, let's say, जब से इंटरनेट बना है तब से उसकी सर्च हिस्ट्री कितनी बार सर्च हुआ इस ईयर में इट गिव्स अ वेरी गुड यार इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट है सो धीरे-धीरे जब 2001 की सेंचुरी का तुम्हारा सन आया तो क्या हुआ डेटा साइंटिस्ट एमएल इस सब जो टर्म्स थे बहुत हाई पकड़ रहे थे तो गूगल ने मार्केट में बाजी मारने के लिए दे इंट्रोड्यूस अ प्लेटफॉर्म कॉल्ड कैगल व्हिच इज द एम्पायर ऑफ दिस डोमेन नाउ सो कैगल इज अ वेबसाइट बटर इट वाज अ वेबसाइट वेयर दे यूज्ड टू प्रोवाइड डेटा सेट्स देन फ्रॉम दैट दे मूव्ड ऑन and they made, made competitions he, okay we will give you this data set and they will ask you this question and you are supposed to answer it so who will answer it? 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 but simple, this is a simple idea it is exactly similar to what code courses how many of you have to come in? code courses, code share, not so nice either why is software engineering job working in internet? why is it not working in internet? कितनों के इंटरनेट में यहाँ पे कुछ तो कोडिंग का आइडिया होगा बहुत सारी कोई तो माइंड आते बच्चा होगा जो बैग भी कोडिंग करने रहता होगा दूसरे सिनेमा के लिए कोड डीएसए एल्गोरिथम कोड कोर्सेस कोड कोर्सेस क्या होते हैं किसी कॉम्पिटिटिव प्रोग्राम वेबसाइट तो तुमको क्या होता है कि यू आर जिम्मेदार से कॉन्ट yeah. Open a port force. Huh? Open a port force. Okay. 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 Competition. Okay. Okay. Contest. Yeah. Contest. Yeah. Contest. Open. Uh, we should have. एंटर यहाँ पे 820 पे एंटर मार्क्ट नाउ इन द कागज़ का दो कंपनीशन कागज़ का इस शुड थोड़े कंपनीशन क्लिक ऑन द दिस वन कंपनीशन से जरिया होगा नीचे सोल्व कर ओपन दिस वन साइड पे साइड राइट वेट it's very biological, right? So, it's a little bit different. Guys, I'm going to do it. Anshwan, anyways, share your screen. It's your tab, so it's not visible in the meet. So, it's actually a recording and it won't be there. Sure. Are you sharing on the meet? You're sharing on the meet. You're not, see, you guys are not sharing the meet. Yeah, we're not sharing the meet. This is code force and this is tagger. Alright, so can you see some of the meat? Hey Tane, are you with us? Yep, I'm here. So thank you for joining us today. I had a wonderful session with you. And uh, you gave us uh, lots of ideas, lots of information about what Kaggle is, how it works. Did you say the rating tracks? Uh, some of us didn't even know about speed. Kaggle ki rating has come up with how to get started with open source, what is ML, and they can start with it, and they can start with it, etc. 
And from the event, we will also be providing you uh, uh, some resources apart from this. So, uh, here in the resources, you found a document which tells you from zero to hero how to go in ML data science. So, who we'll need this? So, it's a wonderful resource created by us. Apart from this, we will also be sharing a doc in which we will be sharing a list of curated and notebooks by the way. So, when I say notebooks, Grand Master, so he has created lots of uh, amazing content. So, we will be sharing it with us. So, thank you, Dan, for, uh, for coming and uh, spending time with us. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, have a wonderful session with you. Yeah. Thanks a lot for inviting me, guys. Yeah. All the best. Good luck, guys. Bye bye.
जो बहुत डेटा यू हैव यू ट्राई टू प्लॉट द विजुअलाइजेशन रिलेशन क्या है फर्स्ट यू ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड डेटा देन मॉडल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड डेटा देन यू कंसीज टू अंडरस्टैंड इन अ बीच दैट एंड यू परफॉर्म बेटर ऐसे होता है तो वी यू टू डेटा एनालिसिस देन यू प्रोसेस इट यू यूज हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू नो हैव हर्ड अबाउट नंबर एंड पार्टनर्स लाइब्रेरी सो व्हाट इज पार्टनर यूज फॉर Uh, so uh, numpy is uh, basically uh, a, a, a subset or a box in python where we store data it's just a, just like a you know small storage place for data who else now about numpy koi bola hai primitive math function primitive function pandas kaun bola hai बोल तो बहुत कहते लोग तो रिपोर्ट डेटा कन्वर्टेड इनटू सीएसएस जेसन और मिक्सचर एंड डेटा एग्जैक्टली व्हाट पांडा इज इज बेसिकली पांडास क्या है इट्स नॉट अ पांडा इट्स अ लाइब्रेरी दैट प्रोवाइड्स योर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर दैट्स फॉर डेटा प्लेन एंड देयर आर अदर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स एज वेल डेट यू से सी एक्सेट्रा हैं मल्टीपल ऑफ देम आर देयर सो भाई सी प्लस प्लस के एसटीएल में तुम्हें बहुत सारे वेक्टर हो गया सेट हो गया लिस्ट हो गया सारे डेटा स्ट्रक्चर मिलते हैं ना In Python, Panda is a library that provides you a table-like data structure. It's called database. You can use that to do lots of stuff. Remember, you know, matrix uh, process that you can say I I do I do it and write the uh, data cleaning and etc. Right? So uh, you use Panda for that. And uh, <laughs> राइट देन यू कम टू अब हमारा डेटा क्लीन हो गया अब आया तो मॉडलिंग पार्ट है राइट मॉडल कैसे बनाना है तो उसके लिए आनी चाहिए एमएल जिसके लिए तुम लोग बहुत ज्यादा हाइप होते हो कितने लोग को एमएल सीखनी है कैसे सीखोगे वेयर यू वेयर डिड यू स्टार्ट फ्रॉम नहीं पता बताओ बताओ कहां से कोई कोई रिसोर्स बताओ अच्छा का जो बहुत फेमस मार्केट में बहुत ज्यादा पॉपुलर हो बताओ ना मैं पूछूं
So, तुम लोगों को आइडिया होना चाहिए कि डेटा साइंस के अंदर नो इट्स वेरी हाई बट इफ यू विल गो देयर यू हैव टू दिस दिस साइड ऑफ थिंग फिर पेपर देंगे दे विल आस्क यू सॉल्व प्रॉब्लम यू माइट पिक अप सम सॉर्ट ऑफ मॉडल स्टेट ऑफ द आर्ट राइट सो यू विल पिक सम वेरी न्यू रिसर्च पेपर एंड यू टेक से पाइथॉस वेरी डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशंस ऑफ जेएल द प्रेमक इन जूलिया फॉर मेकिंग द मॉडल एंड यू विल लोड द पैनल लोड द डेटा सेट training etc and training etc and whatever you are doing sir then you will for your like in software development there is a product team which tells you ki product kya banana hai design document hota hai ki bhai ye specs honi chahiye ye product karna chahiye similarly yahan pe tumko problem statement diya jayega kagal is just a gateway to that kagal tells you how to solve ml problems it jaise software engineers ko computer programming kaam nahi aati hai kagal kaam aata hai but us level pe nahi machine learning production and machine learning कॉन्ट कॉम्बिनेशन स्लाइटली डिफरेंट बट तुम लोग वर्ड फर्स्ट देखते हो इट गिव्स यू आइडिया ऑफ एल्गोरिथम तुम्हारी लैंग्वेज पे पता लग जाती है है कि नहीं मानते हो नहीं मानते हो सीएस के सारे बैठे सब बताओ भाई कोड कोर्सेस जो लोग करते हैं लोगों को भाई लोगों की लैंग्वेज बहुत स्ट्रांग हो जाती है तो सेम चीज ये है कि तुम्हारा बेसिक जो जो से बेस जो तुम यही पढ़ते हो सबसे पहले सेक्टर था बेसिक मैथ्स बेसिक मैथ्स का डिफरेंशियल इक्वेशन एप्लीकेशन और रेडियो थोड़ा छोटा वाला बताते थे ना सिमिलरली कैगर टेल्स यू गिव्स यू एक्सपोजर टू द दैट काइंड ऑफ एनवायरमेंट कि तुम लोग को अभी क्या करते हैं तो बहुत सारे कॉम्बिनेशन आ रहे हैं इसको कि भाई रिसर्च पेपर इंप्लीमेंट करने का एक कॉम्बिनेशन आया है तो तुमको बोला जाएगा कि भाई ये एट द एंड और आल्सो एमएस जो लोग करना चाहते हैं तो एमएस में क्या कर रेटिंग बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है फॉर दोस वांट टू डू मास्टर्स फ्रॉम अब्रॉड इन मशीन लर्निंग एआई से रिलेटेड कोई फील्ड तो इफ यू हैव समथिंग सम पेपर और सम गुड रेटिंग ऑन कैगल कि हमारे पास ट्रैक रिकॉर्ड होना चाहिए कि बहुत लाखों लोग अप्लाई करते हैं पर सेलेक्ट बहुत कम होते हैं क्यों कैसे सेलेक्ट होते हैं कि वो आउटस्टैंडिंग होने चाहिए और अगर उनको पहले से नॉलेज होगा उस फील्ड का तो ऑफ कोर्स वो लोग सेलेक्ट करेंगे ना तो टैगल के व्यू हां भाई ठीक है तो टैगल रेटिंग बहुत अच्छी है तुमको बहुत अच्छा आइडिया है कि ये प्रॉब्लम नहीं है इसको इस आधार कौन सा नंबर मॉडल लगेगा कौन सा आई पर पैरामीटर करना है आई एम आई एम स्पीकिंग सम टर्म्स आई एम स्पीकिंग लैटिन आई नो सो For understanding that, the three that the person given over here, here yeah, we will show you some yeah, regression, some yeah, type of algorithm, regularization in whatever you are given. So it's used for making your ML model perform better. So the key thing given to you is more specific to ML and bias and variance terms. So these two, these two bias variance or regularization, these three terms you will see that some of the high part, four and eight, nine, nothing is done. These parameters are done, nothing is done. ML model तुम्हें पता है डेटा क्लीन करके ML model बनाने तक के प्रोसेस में जितना टाइम लगता है उसका पांच घंटा टाइम लगता है बायस वेरिएंस सेट करने में क्योंकि हाइपर पैरामीटर सर्च बहुत बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है तुम्हारे जो जितने भी जैसे कंप्यूटर में कुछ केस फंस जाता है ना जैसे कि भाई ये फेल हो रहा है क्या कुछ तो इशू है सिमिलरली हियर तो हाउ टू मेक अ मॉडल परफॉर्म बेटर इट डिपेंड्स ऑन हाइपर पैरामीटर रिसर्चर्स स्पेंड ईयर्स ऑन सॉल्विंग दिस प्रॉब्लम सो इट्स वेरी हार्ड टास्क एंड दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग यू लर्न फ्रॉम कैगल You learn from practice, learn by doing. So that spare capital comes into picture and also give you sort of high like bias idea. देखो ये बंदर तगड़ा है, इसको ले लो. So I think that's it for today. Uh, we'll be wrapping up the session. Sorry for extending beyond the time limit. So all right, thank you guys for joining us. Had a great time with you. First row, uh, you can come. There's only one entrance. Uh, this is on your left. Okay, refreshments will be provided. Just go line by line.